Well, this week on the VO Life, we're having a wonderful conversation with Mike Vincent. A lot of you know who Mike is, and I believe you're really going to enjoy getting to know him. So without further ado, let's welcome Mike. If you think about the last few months, maybe it'll give us a new perspective. Maybe we'll see things we've been missing. A singular new design, a re-engineered chip, and 5G. This is iPhone 12 Pro. Send money to your loved ones abroad, and we promise it will arrive on time. Well, well, will you look at what's back? Spice Face. Must be the new spicy Szechuan McChicken. Yep, that's Szechuan with an extra kick. Which one will give you Spice Face? New from the world of Hot Wheels. Welcome to the ultimate garage. The biggest Hot Wheels garage ever. Get ready to race at the tune-up shop and beat your buddy from the top. Yeah, you won. Think of those years. The glory. Years of wondering. Will our time come again? Now back to the VO Life with Troy Holden. This is the VO Life, positive conversations about living the voiceover life. Inside into the business and day-to-day grind of being a regular Joe VO. From the humble beginnings to the finally hitting a new level to getting that first big client. It's all about that VO Life. Here's your host, Troy Holden. Hey, 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 and welcome back to the VO Life. I'm Troy Holden, your host near Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we got a very special guest this week. I have promised you guys interviews, and we just keep cranking them out one after another, and uh, I love it because these are our peers. These are the people out there digging the ditches just like we are. I want you to welcome today, and I'm going to let Mike tell you exactly where he's at up in Canada, but this is Mike Vincent. Welcome, Mike. Yeah, great to be on. Thanks so much. I'm honored oh, it's, uh, that, it's, that you invite me. It's fantastic uh, to have you here. A lot of people are going to be very interested to hear your story and your background, and some are not going to know other things you do. And it's great to share because I think everybody enjoys hearing our, our stories, and we're all out here struggling uh, new voiceover artists. So uh, I've really enjoyed hearing your other podcasts and, and listening to other people's stories and stuff like that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a treat. Good. I really enjoy good. it. Thank well, yeah, you. I'm up here in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, Ottawa. So in the, in the frozen North, although not so much so in July, but yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Today, uh, here, our heat index was 108 degrees. Ooh, we um, can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. And the humidity and it's just, you know, it's stifling. Uh, you can even go outside as late, you know, as eight, 9 PM, and you'll just feel your shirt glue to your body just yeah. instantly. It's terrible. Yeah. Tennessee summer. We get we get muggy up here, but but probably not like that. Yeah. So we get we get hot days in the in the mid 80s, sometimes up to 90. So but, uh, t- tell me a little area. bit about where if I were to to, to drop a pin in my map, where where uh, how would I how would I I guess get in my mind where is Ottawa and what where is that in relation to how far from the border and such. Sure. We're, we're only about an hour from the U.S. border, um, and we would be north of kind of the upper tip, you know, New York State? Yeah. And the, the very upper northeastern tip of okay. New York State. We're kind of right above there. Okay. And uh, so, and then if you, you go, you know, down for so we're, we're about two hours west of Montreal. Montreal is uh, north of New Hampshire there. And then we're about four hours you know, northeast of Toronto. So Toronto's on the other side, going south a little bit more on, on Lake Ontario. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, and then you get around Lake Ontario, there's Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Kind of there. So, yeah, I have uh, flown into Buffalo, driven up to Toronto, then up to Georgia Bay to Penetanguishim and all up in okay, there. Yep. So, yeah, yep. beautiful yep. country. I used to go up yeah. there a lot. I worked for yep. a uh, company that was headquartered up there. So, okay. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah I've crossed the border a few times. So yeah, one, one of the yeah. questions I always like to ask is, how did you land in voiceover? Was this something you thought about as a, as, a, as a child or as a young guy, or was this just something you said, huh, I just want to try this? 
Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it kind of happened all of a sudden. So, so I grew up in the States. So I'm from the States. I'm an American. I grew up in San Diego area in Southern California. And um, I, I guess from a young age, I've always been an introvert. But, but uh, whenever I, uh, growing up, kind of had a chance to speak in front of people or I was thrust in front of it, people are like, well, you really did a good job. You know, people are like surprised that kind of the relatively quiet kid, mm-hmm. not that I, I wasn't, I wasn't super quiet. I wasn't like painfully shy or anything, but I was just more of an introvert. And uh, they're always like, wow, Mike's really good at that. He's really good at, you know, speaking with people and connecting, you know, to an audience or things like that. So that, that kind of has, has always been a little bit in the back of my mind, like, hey, I might have a knack for this, mm-hmm. you know, just, just speaking to an audience. And then um, I went to school in the Northeast and um, and then got into uh, into ministry, and so I'm I'm a pastor, uh, pastor at a church uh, up here in Ottawa, and um, but did seminary down in the states and was involved in campus ministries and things like that, and and sort of just uh, be there's a number of elements of uh, being a part of church life, even before me becoming a pastor, where um, connecting to a group of people, connecting to an audience. Uh, in in different ways, I feel like really helped me in in certain ways, and the, and the other part is um, I I've over time and I've heard people you know tell me this about uh, my own voice or things like that. If if I hear a sound or an accent or uh, a weird sound effect that somebody can do, I can usually mimic it pretty well. Mm-hmm. And so that was that was always kind of a not the best ever, but but somewhat of a talent at least among my peers that are like, Oh, Mike can do that. You know, he could, he can, I don't know, whatever he can, he can probably <laughs> sing that or, or do whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the other thing in church is you're singing a lot, mm-hmm. you know, you stand up to sing, you sing in church, you know, you're singing every week. And so it just, you, you get a lot of vocal practice, um, just, just kind of with that. And so you just, you just learn the sound of your voice over time. You learn what you can do with your voice. You learn how to, how to make it low, how to make it raspy. What's, what's going up or down an octave. What's, um, you know, what's putting some air on it. What's, what's a head voice. What's a chest voice. What's a, you know, all these sorts of things. You right. kind of just hear this. I was, I was the drummer always. I was a drummer growing up. And so I was always the drummer on the worship team and stuff like that. But it, you're, you're around singers all the time too. And so they're talking about these things. So I'm just growing up around bands and, and I was in a bunch of punk bands and rock bands and stuff and and metal bands <laughs> you know in high school whatever <laughs> and so just grow you know around music around singers and stuff and so hearing about how they talk about voice um and and mimicking some of what they do and and learning from those things and then uh, you know as a as a pastor um and you know previously a, a youth and young adults pastor but then you know now I'm a lead pastor now and um you know getting up in front of people in front of an audience and and preaching um it there, there is an element of, uh, I don't want to use this word in the wrong way, but, but performance to it. Mm-hmm. I, I believe what I'm preaching. So it's not performance in that way. Right. I'm, like, I'm not, saying. I'm not conveying something I don't believe, yes. but, but there, there is an element of, I, I am wanting to present this in a compelling way, mm-hmm. in a way that's relatable in a way that's right. understandable. Um, that's, that's, uh, inspiring, right. Um, that I might even get emotional depending on what I'm talking about. So, um, so that, I, I feel like that has a lot, uh, has helped me and had a lot of carryover. And then, um, and then kind of early on in ministry, you know, when you're kind of low man on the totem pole of starting out in youth ministry, stuff like that. I was also the announcement video jockey. (laughs) I was the, you know, well, we need an announcement video this week. Uh, Mike, you do it. You're like, okay, I'm sort of the techie guy or whatever. So throw that together and they need a voiceover. So I'm just using my little, you know, Apple, uh, you know, whatever headphones, whatever that little mic on the string right. on your, right. your AirPods or whatever. And I'm just using that. And I, and I would, I just remember trying to do the voiceover, just say the announcement and I'd play it back. Like, Man, that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds so flat. I sound so boring. Like how do uh-huh. I, how do people do this? I remember thinking to myself, how do people make like an engaging mm-hmm. voiceover? Right. And right. so I, I like, and so that I would do it again and again until like, okay. And like, I, I kind of realized you got to really put a lot of energy mm-hmm. into your read before it communicates anything that sounds like engaging, right? you know, or believable. Right. So all those sorts of things. Um, and then, okay. So here to, to answer your question, finally, how'd I get into this? Um, so pandemic hit and even before then, my wife and I, um, I mean, Depending on where you're pastoring, most most pastors don't make a lot of money, so we're <laughs> we're, right. we're, we're and we got young kids, and so you know, strapped for cash and, and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, obviously we don't do it for the money; we we love what we do. But 
trying to get a side hustle going. We've tried a few different things. My wife tried to do crafting and we tried to have a YouTube channel at one point that sort of fell apart, you know, different things. We're just trying to uh, try to scrape up an extra buck or two. And, um, all of a sudden I'm, I'm scrolling through Facebook and this article pops up a CNBC article pops up about, and and it says, this was the headline says former pastor, uh, makes uh, or make is it makes a million or something that makes a mi- over a million dollars uh doing voiceovers on fiverr mm-hmm. and i'm mm-hmm. like what I, I i think i had peripherally heard about fiverr but the main thing was like okay you know pastor <laughs> makes money <laughs> you know doing voiceover okay you, uh-huh. you hit the trifecta there okay I'll, i'm clicking this hard so i click i learned about this guy and it's i don't know if you've seen him a uh, joel young yep yeah. Um, who's on Fiverr. He's got a YouTube channel, stuff like that. And he mainly does, he's got a whole animation team now. He does like explainer videos and stuff like that, but he's got a voiceover gig too. And cause he started out pretty early on in Fiverr, mm-hmm. uh, I think like eight or 10 years ago or whatever. And he was, he was one of the early voiceover guys and he was a former pastor mm-hmm. and, uh, he's, he's, he, he learned it. He got good at it. And, and he, it was, it was something like over three or four years or whatever, made a million dollars Holy smokes. on Fiverr yeah, or something like great. that. And, um, so I just, just I kind of got into it reading him. So I read this article and I ran upstairs. I remember this. I read it. I read it downstairs. I ran upstairs, tell my wife about it. I'm like, you know, do you think I could do this? Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I think you could. Yeah. You know? So, I, so then I started doing all this research and all you, and you know, all the YouTube channels and right. you know, all the groups we're in and right. all that sort of stuff. And I, I just got into all that, started absorbing this all I could. Yeah. And, um, yeah, then I, I bought some equipment, started to treat my space a little bit. I still working on that. That's always an ongoing process, but Mm -hmm. then, uh, that's anyways, then I, I set up my Fiverr on early November or mid November and, uh, it's been, it's been going great since then. What a ride. That's anyways, that's kind of how I got into it. That's a great ride and a great story. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, the backgrounds of people is not always entertainment or radio or or actors and actresses, um, musicians, uh, pastors, uh, teachers, mm-hmm. people who have to use their voice and talk to people. And as you said, it's not a quote unquote performance, but you are mm-hmm. having to deliver to have people respond. And, yeah. and that's your goal. Um, you know, I've, I have never been an ordained minister. I have spoken in churches before. I had a music ministry for 10 years. And there were yeah, times yeah. during ministering in song that you would be called in your heart to speak. And I yeah. was never one to turn my back on that. But, uh, you mm-hmm. know, it wasn't, uh, I, but I never, uh, oh gosh, I can't imagine managing and 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 having to uh, pastor a church, I, 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 that's a that's a burden that I, I I have always prayed. Don't ever put that one on me because I I, yeah, I really watch. One of those, yeah, hey, I watch a lot it, of what you guys have to do, uh, even churches that I belong to here, and to see what uh, what some of these pastors go through. It's it's really really hard, and I really well, it's, it's a you labor of love. Yeah, it is well, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and and yeah. even the music ministry was there were times that you would have to go sing to strangers when someone in your family was was drowning and you needed to be home mm-hmm. to help them but you were sent to go yeah. minister somewhere else and sometimes it's tough yeah. it is tough yeah. so we were talking yeah. about fiverr and joel uh, joel young very familiar with him and his uh, what he's done um and you've how many how many more signs could he have given you to go do this i mean you had <laughs> you had it right there off cnbc and your wife told you so yeah. it, it's it's wonderful how that has played out i love seeing things like that happen um yeah. so fiverr is is that it for you right now or are you experimenting in other ways you doing some direct marketing what else are you doing uh I'm on a bunch of platforms. It, it I, I got to admit, probably 98% is Fiverr. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really, it, Fiverr really took off for me in a big way. And, uh, and, and the other t- thing is, uh, I mean, with, with pastoring and I'm also a part-time student and stuff like that still. And with young kids or whatever, my kids are six and two. And, um, I, I just don't, I don't have time mm-hmm. <laughs> for, right. for all these, I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant, like, oh, I want to do, you know, voices.com or, or voice one, two, three or whatever. I got free profiles up on there. I don't have time to audition. Understand. Like, I don't have time to do a lot of direct marketing. I've gotten a couple direct, uh, clients, 
uh, through through LinkedIn, and and I think probably somebody found me on Fiverr and you know did did a sneaky right, and found my right. website or that whatever. Happens. You know, some people yeah. do that, but um, yeah, it's it's and I've done some Upwork stuff. I got a few repeat guys on Upwork, mm-hmm. uh, but it's pretty pretty low ball stuff. I haven't really. I, I'm I'm curious to because I I hear these people they they get going on Upwork and that can sort of get to be a flywheel where you get enough repeat guys and then you you start to get more invites to stuff. I feel yeah. like I got that early yeah. on and I was getting invites a lot mm-hmm. and then it sort of dropped off. I just sort of dropped off. I hadn't done anything with it. So now every once in a while I'm trying to yeah trying to poke around Upwork a bit more see if I can get that going. But it's, it's yeah n- five really nobody will off, tell so. us the formula to to what any no. of this is. I, no. I'll go getting <laughs> invites and get just swamped on Upwork, and then it'll die. And, and I don't, you know, I'm like, I'm not getting anything. And I got a thing from yeah. the other day. It said something about your account's almost been inactive. What's going on? I was like, I just finished yeah. a $450 job. What is wrong with them? Yeah, yeah I just, uh, it's really weird. Yeah. I, it's like they're paying attention, but they're not. But I'm sure there are. It, I, I know it's a numbers thing. It has to be for them. If you're making that platform money, they're going to continue to press and push you. And I and I think yeah. that is a yeah. uh, either platform. I think that is, uh, you know, probably the the blessing that you're enjoying because you have been able to consistently uh, get orders and keep things coming and I think when you do that that mm-hmm. keeps you where you need to be and that's that's uh, you know congratulations because it's you know there are so many uh, folks struggling with that and and I'm a multi-platform juggler myself I'm I probably do mm-hmm. um, 50% of what I do on voices.com and probably you know, 30% on Fiverr and then the rest, whatever else. Up, it's been up. cool to see you really take off on, on, uh, voices.com. It, it's see, been fun. Just nailing those auditions and you be getting some good jobs on there and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's and, been and, fun. and it's cool to see that your, your, um, uh, your rates are going up, like your list, your short list rates at your, uh, uh right. are going up and then right. your job rates are going up. And like All everything else, the last, uh, six days, I have not had a short list. So, you know, it well, does, yeah, yeah, and it's what you're auditioning flows, yeah. for. You know, it, it depends yeah. on what you audition for. Yeah. And then, of course, hit, hitting these video game trailers and these uh, animated voices has been really good for me there, but it's not something I expected to do or wanted to do, but I'm happy yeah. to get it. Um, mm-hmm. Do you remember your very first paying job on Fiverr and what it was? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So this guy contacts me and this is you know when you start out on fiverr you're offering peanuts right just i mean you're working for free basically i think my first gig i it was 500 words for five bucks Mm -hmm. and everything thrown in right all the rights i I charge nothing it's just you know whatever i'll be your slave so uh, because you're just hoping to get a bite right you just want to get anything so (laughs) this guy uh video producer whatever from somewhere in the middle east i think and and uh he he says uh, okay, I got uh, uh, two ads for different companies, or, or three ads, two are for one company, one's for another company. And, uh, you know, can you do that? I'm like, yes, sir. You know, absolutely. I'm gung ho. Wow. Somebody actually messaged me on Fiverr. Uh-huh. This is like, I think it was like, I, I had my gig up for, I think, about two weeks right. uh, with nothing. And then, and then I first, you know, got my first message. I was like, oh, what do I do? Right. <laughs> and then, um, so I'm just, you know, yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, whatever. And uh, then he would go back and forth on this project a little bit. And he said, can you do a British accent? <laughs> and, spoiler alert, I cannot do uh-huh. a British accent to save my life. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I just, I didn't, I didn't know that, right? At that point, I just, I just assumed, sure, yeah, I can, easy. I can, pull I, can tr- I can try for five bucks. Uh-huh. You know, what are you really going to ask of me? And uh, and he's from Pakistan, so or whatever. So uh, does he really know a British accent too well? Right. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. I don't know. But I could probably do one good enough. Um, and so it it was like for this uh, company that was it was like Uber Eats or something, but it was a new one. They're starting a new food delivery company, uh-huh. and so it was like these these three short ads. I just remember struggling because the the uh, throughout the the job it kept using the word order on your first order get so much of it well like you don't hit those middle r's in a british accent is order like i can't i i couldn't do it and i kept saying order so wrong again and again and again to try it it just sounded like i had a speech impediment every time i would say order doing a british accent so I was like, okay, who do I, I need somebody to imitate or, or whatever. Like, so I, I looked up a bunch of uh, YouTube videos of Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> trying to like, get like, like his, who's, who's British and, and you know, I like, could emulate. So I, I tried to find some videos of him saying order or like other words. Or whatever. Anyways, I tried to emulate him. I'm sure I sounded terrible, 
But and then he kept coming back for revisions. This one, you know, when you're a bottom right, feeder, right. these guys just keep wear, coming yeah. back. And mm-hmm. I think that that first order probably took me two weeks <laughs> of him coming back again and again. I just kept going, kept going, kept. Yeah. And he gave me five stars. You know, said great job or whatever. So that's, right. that was my, right. <laughs> my right. first one. That's what we were fighting so, for then. That's for sure. Yeah, but yeah, that was. I've never done a British accent again. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my initiation, and now I I just and I've had people ask. I've had like one or two people ask ask for that. And I've just said nope. Yeah, yeah. I'm no. I, I'm just not I, not putting myself through that pain. I fell into the same <laughs> trap a couple of times. Uh, you know, and 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 even people in other countries know what a southern accent is apparently because they would say, "Could you do yeah. that more neutral or or southern less southern or whatever?" And I say. I'm not sure if I can or not. So one of them said, well, could you do any kind of other accent? And I thought, Mm -hmm. I can do Crocodile Dundee, so let me try that. (laughs) There you go. I sent it to them, and they liked it. And, of course, I knew it was terrible, but they liked it and Mm -hmm. paid for it. And they actually came back and had me do their their phone system and IVR in the same accent, and I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. Oh, that's funny. You never know. That's funny. My dad had this story. He went to Australia a long time ago. uh And he said the t- the tour guide on the bus, like the thickest Australian accent, couldn't ever hear it, uh, c- couldn't understand it. But he's on the bus with all these Texans, and they could understand <laughs> his accent. And it, so he that. used yeah. the, the Texans were his translators. He would always ask the Texan next uh-huh. to him, what did this Australian guy say? Because uh-huh. he couldn't make it up. And I just thought that yeah, was the funniest thing, hilarious. how that that somehow translated. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> it is funny. It is funny. Yeah. So, so talking about jobs you did, we talked about your first one. What's your favorite one that you did? What, or, or even more, what do you enjoy doing the most? And maybe what was your favorite? What type of, of genre or, or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I just, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I get called on to do a lot of uh, ads and explainer videos. Um, I, I enjoy those. I get a lot of requests for uh, kind of, well, as you do, your the, your first sample in your demo, which for me is my dramatic, you know, kind of down here like this sort of voice, almost the Batman voice or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and and kind of the low raspy whatever. Right. And, uh, and I enjoy that. I think that's fun. Um, there's one repeat guy I've got for, uh, this Australian tool company Mm -hmm. called Ox Tools. It's all about the, for the tough working man, Ox Tools. Uh You know, I Uh put on a little bit of a Southern accent for that. Not much, just, just a a hint of it on certain words. So I'll I'll do that. I enjoy that. I just did a really bizarre job actually right before this podcast. I'd never heard of this before. I did uh, two ads for this dog breeder. And he's announcing that his his champion Rottweiler has had this litter of babies and he's going to sell them. And so he's talking to me about this. And he, he says, when you're selling champion uh, Rottweilers, he's like, in the Rottweiler world, it's all epic movie trailer ads. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I didn't even know they had ads for this yeah, stuff, but really. okay. And he sent me a sample of the music that he wanted behind it. He paid for background music. He's messaging me now, actually, he wants a, a revision <laughs> uh, on the music, I think. Anyways... But it, and it's all about and he's and, uh, it was my favorite direction I've ever had was just re- he said he said imagine you're not presenting dogs you're presenting dragons he's like that's what I want wow. you to <laughs> sound like <laughs> you're not presenting dogs you're presenting it. dragons it's like that's the feel of every and it's this like deep bass you know trap hip hop music yeah. that goes with it and stuff yeah. and <laughs> with these champion Rottweilers I just thought I I had such a Fun time yeah, doing that for thirty minutes before fun. I came on. It was- <laughs> that is fun. It's amazing yeah. the things that we get asked to do. Sometimes it's just weird amazing. stuff. Yeah. It is. I, um, yeah, I did a a cricket game, and uh, they wanted me yeah. to do it. And he said, "Just I don't care what the accent is. It just can't be American or general American or whatever. You just got to do something." And I, I <laughs> broke out Crocodile Dundee again, and I'm screaming about it. There you about, go. I you can know, do something. Yeah, so why not? And and they and you're That's right. Funny. They'll come back. I do think that the uh, a lot of the foreign countries love the like you said the, the gritty um, theater trailer voice, and they also like the announcer voice where we don't get to do that hardly at all here in the states. Everything's conversational yeah. and pull back and yeah, laid yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing to me how they like that. Yeah. They like the radio stuff, um, and and you probably don't have a lot of spare time because you've you've kind of laid that out there. But what do you guys like to do as a family when you're not uh, doing voiceover and you've got a you know you can walk away 
uh, one day during the week or something. We'll hang out with the kids. What do you guys like to do? Yeah, we. I mean, we go out to the parks and playgrounds around here. We got a lot of great ones. We're we're pretty close to a river, and so we go. There's some trails down there. We hike down there and take the boys down to the river or the beach or things like that. Oh so, yeah, yeah. It's just good stuff. Yeah, good lot, stuff. A lot of hiking, a lot of walking. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful <laughs> country up that way. Anyway, I I love it up there. Um, yeah, I've I've been up here seven years now. I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah, but we're we're flying back home actually in a few days. We're going to spend most of August down in San Diego. My my, we haven't I haven't been back in five years. Oh wow! Uh, to well, to you. San Diego, yeah, see my folks and they can see their grandkids and stuff yeah. like that. So that's great. Yeah, that's great. That'll be good. So you can give. So us it's the, the first uh, time. This is interesting. It'll be the first time I'm 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 committed to. It. I'm using the vacation mode. Oh yeah. On Fiverr. I, yeah, I, I'm I've, gonna I've I'm gonna try it. it. I, yeah. There's a I've lot heard of some horror people, stories, but I don't believe them. I, I know think they work. I think it works. Yeah, I took one week's vacation a couple weeks ago, and I and I did the extended delivery time, and I still got some orders, which was nice. But I did get a lot of people; I had to turn them away. Right. Um. You know, I wasn't recording, so. Right. But anyways, I'm going for it. It's like two and a half weeks. I'll be gone. I'm gonna try that yeah. that switch. Yeah. yeah. Very good. You'll enjoy that. Uh, you'll enjoy yeah. the time away, I'm sure, because it sounds like you're just you're you're kind of like me. You're running wide open all the time you know fifth gear yeah a lot of hours in the day and we're trying to make a lot of people happy and and keep our families supported and all that fun stuff yeah so here's yeah. here's the other thing that just crossed my mind you you were born and raised uh in the states and now you're up there mm-hmm. tell, tell us a little about the differences in living in the states and living up there and what you like and you know the benefits and or maybe even disadvantages and we're not trying to get political but a lot of us are curious yeah. because we don't know yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, here, voiceover related. I get, I've, I've gotten told I hit my T's too much now. <laughs> so just in terms of the language, like a, an, an American, often you, you, a T will turn to a D in kind of the American accent. You don't say little, you say little, mm-hmm, right? Correct. Or, or um, a lot of times you end a word in a T. It, you don't even kind of hit the T. It's, it's um, like where's that at? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't say a T at the end. It's just at. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's it's just the Correct. vowel, really. You, yes. you just kind of do silent T's at the end of words and stuff like that. Canadians usually hit the T's mm-hmm. a bit more, and it's it's a little bit more left over from the British. There, you up here in Ontario, you, you get a lot of sense of there's a lot more British leftovers than there are in the states mm-hmm. culturally mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And um, and yeah, I, I remember uh, a lot of the, the things that you notice first is going to a grocery store. It's like, where's half the brands that I'm used to uh, yes. uh, in the store? That's that's the thing that I remember. Like, what do I even buy? Like, I don't, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of the same brands, you know, but there's a good, maybe not half, but there's a good third probably of the brands of the stores. Like, where's this? Where's that? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um you know, uh, the whole candy section in the States is all Mars bars, right? It's all uh, Mars and M&M's company stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. In in Canada, it's all Cadbury. Uh-huh. Right. So they, right. they've got all the Mars stuff, but then it's a lot of the Cadbury mm-hmm. stuff. We just get, in the States, you get Cadbury eggs at Easter. That's about it. Right. They've got a whole selection of candy. So I remember that's that was kind of different. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I have noticed, I think in general, people are more polite. Mm-hmm. Um, people are... Um, which is kind of a stereotype. People are also more indirect. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you what you want or what they want. They they will indirectly express a desire <laughs> or a need right. or I wish that were so. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, that would be nice. But they're asking me, would you do this? Right. right. <laughs> it's like, right. I, I, it took me a while to pick up on, okay, when somebody kind of drops a big hint, uh-huh. that's the Canadian way of like, <laughs> would you do this, please? You know, uh, Americans are much more direct. Yes. They're like, hey, can you do this? You're, you know, or whatever. So that's, that's a difference. Um, the Canadian accent. Uh, you know, in the states, we make a. It's it's much more exaggerated how we imagine the Canadian accent. Yeah, I I find that what at least what I've noticed, I, I really don't find any Canadian accent um, uh, anywhere near to what the, I, I don't hear anybody say a boat or a boot. Mm-hmm. I've never heard that mm-hmm. in Canada right. unless you go to. I've heard it more out in the country. Yeah, it yeah. tends to be more of a country accent, or if if you're out. Uh, I've heard you know people more from the the middle of Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, you know, kind of that area, more the the prairie state stuff like that. You'll get a little bit more of that thicker accent there. Right. It's more of a country Canadian accent that people are 
express when the, when when Americans make fun of the Canadian accent, right. that's mainly what they're right. talking about. If you go to Toronto, Ottawa, they don't have any of that accent. Right? They, yeah, they I didn't talk hear like it that. a lot up yeah. there. We yeah. can thank Bob. There, there's there's little things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They overdo right. it, right? To make make fun of themselves, right. and and for sure, you can find people like that. There's people in my wife's family that you you get hints of it. Mm-hmm. You know, with certain words here and there, mm-hmm. but but it's just that it's certain words. It's not it's not an overarching right uh, thing. It's not like a whole regional like a southern accent where it's like you can hear it in everything. It's right. in every word. Right. It's in every whatever right. uh, or British or whatever. It's only certain certain. Yeah, ways, the big but, word I always uh, uh, yeah. caught was uh, process and process. That was always a huge one because I would go up yeah, and I'd say, yeah. you know, well, I'd say, yeah. well, Nissan doesn't do it with that process, and they would say Nissan doesn't do it by the process and i thought like, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> or here's a big one okay here's a big one that it does come out in a lot of words is um they will sharpen their a's what i mean by that is that an ah sound will go to an ah mm-hmm. and oftentimes in certain words and then an ah sound will go to an a okay in, in words okay. or whatever so uh the the video game super mario mm-hmm. they say mario right Right, I do. The name that. Mario is Mario up here in Canada. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" Uh-huh. I was like, "Oh, you want to play, by, you know, Mario? <laughs> you mean Mario? Like, what are you talking about?" And then uh, pasta, it's pasta. Yeah, yeah. I they do they eat pasta that. up here. Yeah. You don't eat pasta. But you uh, hear that in different things areas things like that. Of the states as well. You hear some of those. That's true. Yeah, certain around. areas of the states. Uh, my favorite yeah. thing up there, and of course we have it in the states, just not in Tennessee. You have to get up into Ohio. Is the Timmy Hortons. Uh, and and oh, yeah. the the, yeah. the biggest everybody loves their Timmys. Yeah, the biggest thing. Uh, first time I went in, I, I had flown up late at night, and I stopped at one and was getting a coffee. And uh, they asked me how I wanted it, and I said uh, cream and sweetener. And he kind of looked at me funny, and I said cream and sweetener. And he's like, how many? How much? And when I told him, mm-hmm. he turned around and yelled in the back, medium, medium, something, double, double. And I'm like, I don't know, double, I don't double. know what a yep. double, double was. <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way. Uh, yeah. Two cream, two sugars, a double, yep. double. Yep. Double, double. There you go. But the, yeah, I miss yep. those places. I wish we had them down here. Yeah. They're fantastic. What blows my mind is that like up here in Canada, Tim's and uh, uh, Wendy's are often conjoined. Yeah. They have some partnership. Yeah. They usually share a building. They yep. have some business deal. And at lunchtime or supper time, which you think... That because Tim Hortons is basically the Dunkin' Donuts, same same right. sort of vibe, same, same sort of thing. whatever. Yeah. That kind of level of coffee shop with a few you know donuts and and they have some sandwiches, whatever. But at like so you'd expect like you know breakfast prior to work, kind of snack thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. At the main peak lunchtime or main peak supper time, the drive-through lineup, there's nobody in the Wendy's line. It's all Tim mm-hmm. Hortons, mm-hmm. and I'm like for me it's like. I, Lunchtime. I want a burger. Right, I'm gonna go to Wendy's, right? They, right? Like I want to get Tim's and get some wrap or something they weird want the or something. But the it's soup and they the, want yeah, Tim's. It's yeah. like a Canadian thing. It Wendy's is. is the foreigner, you know. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. He's the hockey guy. We're gonna give him the business. Yeah, it's kind of like Chick Fil A down here. My goodness, yeah, amazes yeah, me. Yeah, uh, I heard, had heard yeah. on the radio the other morning the average owner of a Chick Fil A uh, makes seven million dollars a year. That's, oh, I gotta get me one of those. <laughs> Seven million. Seven That's million. incredible. So I'm not gonna get into the underworkings of Fiverr because we, we talked about Fiverr a lot on these podcasts and, and everybody would love to figure it out. And and uh, I think um, Alice uh, Everdeen said it best last week. Stop trying to figure it out. Just put out mm-hmm. a good product, uh, put everything in your profile, do your best. Uh, you know, use your key. Everybody knows, go get a gig doctor or go get somebody to help you with all that. Yeah. And set it up right yeah. and let it go. You know, maybe yeah. change your thumbnail here and there. Maybe change a, a word here and there, but quit fretting yeah. over it. There's no magic solution. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I get I get people ask me all the time, uh, you know, how, how did this take off for you? All this sort of stuff. And, and I have to say, look, if you've done, if you've listened to kind of all the free advice that you can get easily from you know guys like Anthony Pika and and you know and uh, and, and and Dane Scott and, and all these stuff that's all that about how to set up your gig and all these groups around stuff like that. If you've done that, you got your description, you got your titles, you got a decent demo, uh, that's important. You got a decent thumbnail, all that sort of stuff. If you've you've got it set up, and they're like, I must be missing something, mm-hmm. and it's like you're not right. You're really right. not right. Uh, if if you sound good now, some people. 
I find they, they have maybe a, and I'm not really in a position to talk cause I'm pretty new at this, but they, it's, it's hard to say. And I don't, I don't really tell them this. It's not really my position to say, but I, they, it doesn't seem to me that they really have a marketable voice. Right. They really need to work on their demo or work on their performance. I think that oftentimes that's the issue that nobody wants to touch because people don't want to hurt your feelings. Don't, don't want to hurt your feelings. Hurt your feelings. So I get it. I get I it. Too. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I tell people, Look, the thing that took off for me was I got a couple of really big orders early on. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I don't know how they came. They landed in my lap. But my first month, uh, I, I was getting orders. I got like three orders that were like, it was like 150, 240, and a 95. Mm-hmm. When most of my orders were five, ten, fifteen dollars Right, right, right. And so all of a sudden, I popped up to the first page. Mm-hmm. Because I was, in a short time, my average selling price skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. And so after month one, my average selling price was like 35 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then each month after that, it grew by like 10 or 20. Right. And so I just got, uh, and so I, I, I can't produce that for you. There's no tag you can put in for right. that. There's no, right. there's no title description. There's no secret formula. I didn't, I don't know how, what I did to make that happen. I had big orders drop in the average selling, like the, the fiber algorithm, of course, they, they want to make money. So if they if if I somehow was able to show them that I made them a bunch of money early on, mm-hmm. then that's that's how it worked for yeah. me. So I don't think there's there's you follow all the free advice, uh, make sure it's all doctored up as as well as you can. But beyond that, there's no you, you kind of and I feel bad for folks who they're still they're they're at it for years and all this sort of stuff and they're they're charging such a low rate because they do look at your average sale price per month, but they also do look at your overall average sale price and mm-hmm. bringing that up after, after so many years becomes increasingly hard. Yes. Yeah. I can imagine. And so I didn't follow a lot of advice. A lot of advice was saying, keep your prices low until you get a hundred, a hundred star or five star reviews. Mm-hmm. And I didn't follow that. Mm-hmm. I, I, kind of chose to believe what I heard a few other people saying is like, no, they, they want to make money. They don't care how many, you know, whatever. And so, um, I, I kept inching up my prices Mm -hmm. as I was getting orders. And so my average selling price went up. If you can do that. And I didn't have that much history because I was new. Right. So my average wasn't being weighted down by, by years of, of $5 orders. Right. And so I, I, I think, that now obviously this is not i don't know i haven't met the guy behind the the curtain there <laughs> you know in fiverr to, to say how it all works that's my best guess right. as to why i don't have the best demo i don't have the best thumbnail i don't have the best description or tag i always tell people feel free to copy my tags copy my my whatever right uh on fiverr if it'll think you if you think it'll help you i'm i'm i but i i didn't nobody gave me that nobody i I learned all my stuff copying all the other mm-hmm. top rated guys right. like everybody else is trying to right. do. Like what's, you know, there's no difference there. Yep. Um, yep. So there, there is no secret sauce. It's just, uh, yeah, you got to somehow get the flywheel turning and it, it turned for me early on. And so I've been, I've been very grateful for that. That's awesome. And, and it's very true. There is no, you know, you're not going to, you can throw 200 gigs in a pot and stir them up. And, and there a lot of them are exactly the same or almost the same, the same keywords, whatever. And it's, I think yeah. it's like you're saying, it's getting, uh, hitting at the right time, hitting some clients that come back repeatedly and are giving you good, solid orders. I'm, I, I'm very happy and blessed with that right now that I have a handful mm-hmm. of people that are ordering good sized orders. I, I'm just not building up from the bottom fast enough. And I think it'll come. I'm not worried about it. Um, but it's, you know, I, I can understand where people feel disheartened. Uh, and and mm-hmm. agitated yeah. and trying to figure it out because a lot of people are analytical and they think I will figure this out. No, you won't. Sorry, you're not. <laughs> There's nothing to figure out. Yeah. Just there is patient. no magic keyword. Yeah. No magic. There is no magic keyword. No magic yeah. to it. Um, yeah. I, I know you're in some groups as well, and you're in our group, our VO Life group, and we like having you there. Yeah. We're not crazy active all the time, but sometime when somebody needs some help or something, we all try to jump in. Uh, do you feel some, you know, there's good importance in that and having these places to bounce ideas or, or people that are going through things? Yeah. And helping? I, I really enjoy it. I, I love being a part of these groups and helping people out and, and receive, especially early on receiving a ton of help. I was, I was asking questions on all these groups and stuff like that early mm-hmm. on. I still ask questions 
and uh, get a lot of a uh, lot of help and a lot of a uh, lot of good advice from people who are are very experienced. Right. Um, right. Either on Fiverr or you know so, so you got groups that are more focused on Fiverr and Upwork and groups that are you know they like to poo poo that they don't right. you know, like those things right. and and uh, and so it, but it's good to kind of you know you can kind of be a fly on the wall more so in those groups or or you, you learn what kind of questions you can ask in yes. certain groups yes you, do. <laughs> you know depending where you're at absolutely and, and um, I love it I've really enjoyed it um, I'm part of a lot of groups um, but to your point I think you posted earlier I it, it can be a, a bit of a time waster if it, you're just kind yeah. of surfing through the groups and yeah <laughs> and it can trying to answer everybody's question I, I, and, I, and, I, I don't want to yeah. find myself doing that versus I may need to be doing something to self-coaching or doing some things to work on a demo or make something better and yeah and instead of doing that yeah so I, I've cut my yeah. way down but that's that's not a knock on anybody that's in 10 12 groups you know because especially mm-hmm. if you're digging and learning I, I think it's the place to get a lot yeah. uh have you done and i've and i've gotten work through people yes you uh, will. that's the other thing mm-hmm. and it's and it's not and it's not and i've never tried to it's never been i i'm genuinely just happy to help i'm genuinely there because i like it i like the community mm-hmm. uh, of it mm-hmm. but then you know just after a while you build relationship with folks and, and they'll toss you work right. or they'll right. recommend you to somebody or, or whatever and so um that's I, I love that about the voiceover community yeah. Yeah. Uh, people, people can pass around work like candy sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Yeah, it you know? is awesome. So, it is awesome. Yeah. So what about some final words, final advice for people out there? They just got started. They've only been in a little while. They're struggling. Um, you know, what, how do you advise them or what would you tell them today before we take off? Yeah, I, I think I lucked out and, um, I, I, I had a pretty decent, I don't know why this is coming to mind, but I, I think I didn't even realize until after the fact how good my demo was for uh, for how good I was, uh, meaning how new I was, right. I should right. say. Um, uh, and not to I'm not I'm not trying to to brag here, but I I hear a lot of demos being put up on Fiverr, and I guess I'm harping on the previous point. And people come to me or I hear on the groups or whatever, and and they're looking for the other secret sauce on Fiverr. Mm-hmm. But really, they need more coaching mm-hmm. and they need more training. And right. and I didn't have any early on. I, I was kind of self taught, but I did. I did a lot of YouTube training. Mm-hmm. I watched a lot of coaching videos of people doing coaching, and so I I was I was getting a lot of that kind of secondhand right. and stuff like right. that. And now I've had some coaching. Um, but uh, so I I I guess I would if you've only got kind of one time to make your first shot, right? Mm-hmm. On Fiverr and a lot of these places. Um, I am leaning more towards, um, you know, if, if, if you, if you need it, get some more coaching first before you put up a gig, before you put up a demo, before right. you send out right. something first, especially if it's on one of these platforms where it is kind of one of those flywheels, yep. because if you're not going to get the skills to create that demo until six or uh, six months or a year from now, mm-hmm. well, that's again, going back to the average selling price stuff and that flywheel, whatever you're got, then you got six months to a year of little to no orders, very small orders right. to wait against you. Right. Whereas you could have started out with more of a bang yeah, that's a good and, point. and might, might've had some better traction early on. I think that's what happened with me again, I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I, I think I just had, I, I had something that was marketable early on enough that it, it really helped me yeah. out. Yeah. And I sort of got lucky in that regard, but, yeah, um, but, but that's a very good yeah. point. That's a very good point. Yeah. I have heard. Yeah, soak up all the training you can get. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I've heard a lot of uh, demos where all five spots have the same cadence, the same tone, yeah. and you can't do yeah. that. Uh, you really got to mix it yeah. up and, and get on and listen to these guys that are doing free YouTubes. Like Mike said, if that's where you got to start, start there. And when you start making some money, yeah. invest in coaching. You know, we, we always yeah. say here, get your space right. Uh, get yep. your demo right through coaching and then get out there and do it because I made the same yeah. mistake. I went into it with, you know, not really understanding how to do a demo or load a demo. And I was on five or two and a half months before I ever got a video or anything up. I didn't know what I was mm-hmm. doing and I wish I had studied yeah. that more. Uh, but uh, I was on Upwork, which I didn't need mm-hmm. all that because you were having to audition or send a sample. And and, and right, I was yeah, making, yeah. you know, okay there. And then I said, you know, all these people are doing good on Fiverr. I need to play catch up. And, and I wish I yeah. had waited and started later. But, 
you know, it is what yeah. it is. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah. Mike, thank you so much for taking time with us. I know you're very busy, and I know people are going to enjoy. Oh, it's uh, so fun! I, I really appreciate well, good. it. Good. I know they're going to enjoy hearing your story and all the things you got to uh, you got to say, and they're going to be disappointed that you didn't have any secret sauce. But that's okay. <laughs> there is none. There is none. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, I wish you continued success. You're a super nice guy. I enjoy talking with you. And I know we uh, we message sometime back and forth and things. And you've joined in on some group stuff we've done. And, and uh, just really pleased to watch your success. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. And uh, thank and, you. And may you continue to be blessed on your journey and, and, and be blessed thank with you. your church and your family. And and, uh, amen. God's good. Amen. All the time. All the time. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Mike. And yeah. we'll say uh, good night or goodbye from Nashville, Tennessee. And thank everybody yeah, for good joining night. us. Thank you. See ya. You've been listening to The VO Life with Troy Holden. Check back for more episodes each week and catch up on what you've missed also. This is for you, those just living that VO life. Thanks for listening and join us again. The VO Life intro is by Louise Porter. The outro by Liz Moya. You can pick us up on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple, and many other podcast carriers. Need to send me an email? Do it today. Troy at TroyHoldenVoices.com. Thanks for listening.